it's only a bit of lightning or the last leg on the boat 111 we've set out the Meltemi there's a bit more coming through this afternoon this evening but we're off to find an anchorage we do our first mooring back to rocks make a bit of a pig's ear of it as well we find this our first stunning little anchorage in Turkey we visit an ancient harbour but apparently it's strictly forbidden to fly a drone inside and around the ancient city ruins and the local turtles get uh, close up and personal and we sit out our first thunderstorm in Turkey Bodrum has a fantastic castle and museum complex but we're going to go back there next season and show you around. So here we are leaving Bodrum Harbour. We've set out the Meltemi. There's a bit more coming through this afternoon, this evening but we're off to find an anchorage. It's been really good if not a little expensive but the checking in process was so easy with us and our, uh, our agent. We found everything we needed and uh, actually got some bargains which I'll show you either later in, the, in this video or um, in an upcoming video. Yeah, yeah I like this place. Madam's at the helm. So we only went seven miles down the coast to this little anchorage, our first one in Turkey. What a start! The next anchorage was just as stunning and we tied back to the rocks and it's the first time that we've done this and we made a bit of a pig's ear to be honest but we got it done and we stood off 25 meters or so 
Caroline managed to take this fantastic picture first thing in the morning as the sun was rising. Early in the morning, we've just got up, walked Oscar, and uh, undone the lines. We were tied back to where these rocks are here, next to that, um, I think it's a Fairline powerboat. We had a fantastic night's sleep. It's the first time that we've uh, tied back to rocks. It was a bit of a palaver, but now uh, we've looked at where we went wrong and where we went right, we think we'll be able to improve our method. Very peaceful place. The next anchorage we moved on to wasn't that far away. A historic spot, somewhere we really wanted to visit. An ancient harbour, literally thousands of years old. Somewhere we really wanted to look at. Wow, look at that. And this is uh, apparently quite an ancient, uh, an ancient harbour. So uh, we'll take a look when we get in. I'll have to keep talking because they've got loud music going in the background. But apparently, it's strictly forbidden to fly a drone inside and around the ancient city ruins. Just in case the drone hits one of them big lumps of stone, I guess could do it a load of damage. Well, they won't let me fly the drone, but. I might just put the software on and see if it's actually a no-fly zone. It's a bit of a shame there are signs everywhere. Thou shalt not fly thy drone. It looks a bit too organised, doesn't it? This is yeah. just, they've just been placed there. I expect if the drone hit one of them big lumps of marble or something, it could do a lot of damage. <laughs> it appeared that parts of the ruins were being reconstructed using modern stone and modern techniques. And these were clearly visible. I'm not quite sure whether, well, you know, that's the right thing to do, but apparently that's what they do nowadays. They reconstruct using modern materials and they are, well, able to see the difference between the ancient and the modern and get an idea of what it used to look like. You can see here part of the amphitheatre has been completely reconstructed with modern materials, even concrete. The place was quite busy and we wanted to really go inside and have a good look round to show you guys what it's like. But we're going to wait until next season when we'll have a museum pass and we can get into all of these museums and historic monuments for free. Our next stop was towards Dacha, not that far away, but again, somewhere we wanted to go. Oh, there we are, that's the sunrise, up before Sparrow's Fart again, uh, left the little anchorage. Um, we're now heading further east towards Dacha. Uh, the weather was due to come up this afternoon, it's already pushing swell through, we've got about two metre swell probably see it maybe behind us it's not too bad this boat does cope with swell quite well um, due to its hull shape but away we go we should be there in about two and a half three hours just got the jib out at the moment the winds behind us and it's due to get up quite strong later on so uh, we'll stay with that, just about to change course and head for where this gullet is on the horizon there. Away we go. Time for a coffee, I think. Swell and waves never seem to show up that well on video. Don't know why, I guess there's nothing for you to 
judged them against. But I think this bit of video shows it quite well. Before we'd finished anchoring, a turtle stuck his head up, maybe 10 feet from the boat, 3 metres, and he continued to keep popping up while we were staying at Datcha. David! David, Caroline! Turtle! Turtle, here! Here! Oh well, that was our introduction to Adacha. Show you round. So we're in um, quite an open bay from the east. The prevailing winds are uh, northwesterly. It's going to come up westerly this afternoon. So at the moment you're looking south, and that way's west. That's where the winds are going to come from. So we'll be very well protected. Water is crystal clear. Yeah, very pretty. So we're in, um, let's have a look what we're in. We are in six meters of water. I've got 35 out. The reason I've got 35 meters out is because we know there's gonna be wind coming. It was Caroline's birthday. So we took Oscar out for a walk and then we all went off for a meal to celebrate. I hope it gets more so the more you know the... And this is the East Harbour. It's much shallower closer in, so bigger boats can't get in there. Oscar, what oh, I was dog. Ah, quick run away, wasn't we? Ah. Lights are coming on. A few anchor lights yet to be put on. This guy behind us came in. See if we can see him. And there, he's got his anchor light on. And now he's got some very weird shape, day shape. And his forward triangle. Perhaps he's hoping it will grow into a ball. Oh well that's been a long tiring day. <laughs> Not. We left Atcha, uh, we've, we went 10 miles to a bay um, which was really well protected as apparently everybody knows because they were everybody was in there we've now come over to the peninsula I'll put the long and lap there and the name of it and we're in a what looks like a sunken volcano um, it's a fairly big bay I would say it's half a mile across um, we had our second go at uh, tying back to the rocks um, which was made much easier um, we we handed our rock straps to David who was already here and he put them round the rocks I'll show you in a minute and um, and then took our line which made it was meant it was much easier and at confession time we did have two attempts the first attempt I only put about 45 meters of chain out um, and we were already in 28 metres of water, so we didn't we didn't hook and hold. Um, so we went back out again, got ourselves parallel with David's boat, and I'll show you where that is in a minute. It's just over there. And then we um, we came back and we put 85 metres of chain out of our 130. So the uh, anchor locker was almost empty, the chain locker, sorry, was almost empty. Um, and then we backed up on that and allowed the anchor to drag along the bottom. 
and hold us off the rocks. David took our floating line and just tied it to the straps he'd put on earlier. So I think if we're if you're buddy boating, it's actually easier to do because you you need three people. You need one on the anchor. You need uh, one on the helm, putting the boat in the right place, and you need one taking the floating line and the straps to put round the rocks. Let's show you where we are. So there's the dinghy, and you can see the rocks here are. They look, well, they look very close to me. They're 23 meters away. So what's that? It's about uh, 25 yards or so. Uh, Cindy's throwing pots and pans around in the galley. There's a floating line there, and our sinking line on on the leeward side. Um, so David's here. He's. Uh, about 50 meters away 55 yards and there's a gullet the other side of him they've just started their generator and their their barbecue and the moon and noon and noon is up there but in the distance you can see oh there must be 25 30 35 boats going right up to the end of the anchorage hello mate have you come to star in a video yeah, I'm a Star Trek. You know, I only want to see me. All oh, right, okay. Um, and then across the other side of the bay, there, there must be another 30, 35 boats. Um, this is the floating line that we bought, 80 metres, so that just spools out, and then um, we spool it back in again. And at the moment it's round a cleat and we've got some slack there which I could pay back onto there that's the view in front uh, that's open water there well not really open water because the other side of the peninsula is there uh, I'm, I guess that's three miles away we have got an anchor ball up even though technically we're moored. We stayed there two nights. And this is the view we had on the second night. So despite all the lightning and thunder, we actually didn't have any rain at all. And then the camera fell over. The next morning we took Oscar for a walk and put the drone up so you can see exactly what the bay looks like.
So here I am in sunny Marmara, it's 20th September and I'm still in a t-shirt and shorts. The sun's still quite hot. We've popped in here for a couple of days, it's part of the Setter Marinas. Um, so we get a big discount as we've booked an annual contract with Setter. Um, we've got some uh, work that we needed to do on the boat. And this is a major town where we can pick up the bits and pieces that we needed. So we thought we'd pop in and uh, stay a few days. Um, we've done some exploring in the town and in fact Cindy's out exploring right now as I speak. She's got the GoPro with her and uh, she's going to take some film so hopefully you'll uh, see that in a coming video. Um, big shout out to our Patreons. I can't tell you how important you guys are to us. It uh, gives us the inspiration and the money to continue making videos. Without you guys, we simply couldn't afford to do it. Uh, we've spent more money this month on uploading videos than we've had of income from uh, YouTube uh, since they changed the way that they pay people yet again. So people who think that we make a lot of money from YouTube, I can assure you we definitely don't. Um, so big shout out to all of our Patreons, you guys know who you are. If you want to become a patron, well look, I'll put a link down here. It's the cost of a cup of coffee or a decent beer once a month and you get not only the videos that you see on YouTube, but you get extended videos, you get uh, extra how-to videos, you get tracking services, you can contact us, we can give you technical help. There's loads and loads of stuff we do for Patreons that we don't do for people on YouTube. So hit the subscribe and give us a like, but if you really want to see more, go over to Patreon and become a Patreon and join the crew. Also a big thanks to our subscribers. Uh, we're up at over 6,000 now, which we never thought would happen when we started a little video channel just for our friends and family and members of the um, sailing community and clubs that we were in back in the UK. It's been a success, but uh, it's been a success we've had to work on quite a bit. Well there we go again, I've turned the camera on and the barking dogs stop. At least it's not a weed whacker this time. As you can see, Marmaris is still warm and sunny and the dog is still barking in the background. Oi, the camera's the wrong way round. What a wally. <laughs> 